We got Georgie, aka the G Banger. <laughs> we got Rosie, or Rose. You're not a. Do you ever go by Rosie? No, just Rose. Just Rose. Yeah, like no Rosie for me. Yeah. Dynamite. And today we are driving to go AI some cows. So, George has said. So, what synchronization program do you use? Radio. So, there's lots of different synchronization programs. <coughs> what we're doing is fixed time AI. So, what's the alternative to fixed time AI? I just hate to take Yeah, yeah. So, historically, back in the dream time, um, people used to um, synchronize, uh, sorry, um, heat detect and then AI them. So, if, if you saw a cow in heat, when would you AI her? Isn't it if she's on heat in the morning, you AI her in the afternoon? If she's on heat in the afternoon, you AI her in the next morning. Spot on. Yeah, yeah. So, now well, that works really well in. And what sort of production system? Dairy, yeah, dairy's awesome because most guys are milking in the morning and in the afternoon and sometimes in the middle of the day. So they just keep an eye out, you know, go and look over the fence before they brought the cows up or when they return the cows back to the paddock looking for girls that run heat and, um, and would um, yeah, make note and then after they milked them they would AI them. So it worked really slick, you know, just heat detect. Cool beans. Then we started synchronizing. So the next step, that's just straight heat detection. Are you on heat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the problem with heat detection, so when you work out your pregnancy rate based on an AI program where you heat detect, there's a bunch of multipliers, right? So you got you got your conception rate, but then you've also got your submission rate. So what does submission rate mean? How many you AI? Yeah, so what percentage of the population you AI? So cows come on heat how many days on average? How often? Spot on, every 21 days. So how many are on heat per, on any particular day, roughly? What percentage? One divided by 21 is? <laughs> one twentieth, one twentieth? A hundred divided by 20 is another way of doing it. Five percent, yeah. So five percent are on heat any, on any given day. So if you find that you are AIing five percent of the population per day for the first 21 days, you've probably got a pretty high submission rate. But generally what happens is, some animals just don't come on heat. Uh, they don't show, so they call that not showing heat. Is called silent heat source. Silent heat source is where they where they do cycle, but you don't see it. But then there's another one, and even worse for anestrus, right? And who, what what sort of production animals suffer from anestrus heaps? Dairy, yep. and, and that's lactational anestrus. So what what in the heck drives lactational anestrus? Why do these lactating girls struggle to cycle? Yeah, because yeah, they, they literally cannot eat enough to be on a rising plan of nutrition when they're in heavy lactation. So when they're when they're heavily milking, they're they're working so hard that it's hard to get on a rising plan of nutrition. But also, progesterone is an important component of the whole cycling thing, right? So they got they've got they've got to have these you know where they got progesterone for about 14 days and then the progesterone goes away and then the the, fo the dominant follicle grows and develops and pops and releases you know the oocyte which goes down the fallopian tube. And we'll get there in a minute. Um, the problem, and then, and then once they conceive, if they do conceive, then the, 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 the little embryo will implant into the endometrium and send out a signal, early pregnancy detection factor, that'll tell the cow, don't release prostaglandin, don't release prostaglandin, and so she won't, and so she'll maintain the pregnancy, because um, the CL will produce progesterone. So a dairy cow might have a, kind of a smallish follicle, and she might you know, be lucky enough to pop and release the oocyte, which may result in fertilization um, and result in implantation and the CL, the corpora hemorrhagicum, which is left over from the follicle to pop, could turn into a CL, which produces progesterone. However, where is progesterone screened out? Where does the progesterone's got a short half-life? Where, where does the progesterone get broken down into other stuff in the, in the cow's body? There's generally two places where things are excreted. One's in the urine and the other is through the... Yeah, copy, copy. Where is lactose made? Yeah, so these dairy cows that have been selected, evolved, use what word you like, to produce lots and lots of milk, they've got freaking ginormous blood flow through their liver. Like the amount of, their, their blood is roaring through these huge livers and, and, it's, and it's being filtered and it's doing all sorts of good stuff that the body does. But the bad part is it takes and screens out lots of, yeah, so then what happens, these girls that are pregnant, what happens? 
they, 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 they produce PG and then they lose that conceptus. That sucks. And it messes up with their ability to cycle. So dairy cows are hard to get in calf because of that. Because they're just working so hard, you know, feeding the world, producing milk for our cocoa puffs and things like that. Pretty rad. Okay, so we're back to synchronization. Wow, that guy's pretty great. See that motor pickle? Man, he went around the road, you're like, <laughs> What do they reckon about motorcycles? It's not, it's not when you're gonna wreck, or not if, it's when. Um, that dude might have a short half-life, much like progesterone. Um, those of you out there driving motorcycles, be aware. It's hard for us to see you in these cars, especially when we're talking about progesterone. Okay, so synchronization program. So we used to just heat detect, and some guys, a lot of dairy still heat detect. Then we came up with synchronization programs, and the idea of synchronization programs was to just bunch up as many cows as we could to shorten the amount of time. So what's the most simple synchronization program that you can think of? The uber, uber simple one that we often talk about in school. Two shots of about, about, yeah, two shots of PG, 11 to 14 days apart. So what happens is you give them a shot of PG, everything that's got a seal is gonna go away. They're all gonna come on maybe two to five days later, but some of them are not gonna have a CL, and so they're not gonna to respond to the PG. So if you, if you give them a needle and then wait, um, you know, 11 to 14 days later, they're all gonna have a CL on that second dose of PG. Some are gonna be little, some are gonna be big, some are long base, bang, we hit them again, bosh. You know, they, they'll all ovulate two to five days later. So that's a really simple synchronization program. But it's just synchronization. It's still spread out over two to five days. So you still got to heat detect, but instead of heat detecting 21 days, you can heat detect, you know, from day 48 to day to um, the fifth day, right? So 48 hours out to about um, 120. So that's kind of cool. Um, <coughs> but conception rates aren't awesome. And that's because some of those girls didn't have a very big CL, you know, they're, they're where they were in that, in that ovarian side and the ovarian cycle wasn't optimal for another good follicle to be produced, you know, as far as the follicular wave. So remember the follicular wave. How many, um, you know the eggs you've got in your body right now, guys? Yes. Were they always with you from the moment you were born as a little baby? Yeah, it's pretty rad, eh? So all the babies, all the, all the eggs that you've got have been with you your entire life. Unlike us blokes, we just keep making more zygotes and wasting them. Don't read into that too much. <laughs> but but you guys have them, and every seven days in a cow, they go through a follicular wave. So you got these tiny little eggs, and they're all sitting inside the stroma of the oocyte, and someone get a little fluid cyst around them, and, they, and you get all these little follicles, a whole bunch of them, and it's a wave of follicles, kind of like a wave of zombies trying to climb the fence. And then if there's PG in the road, they regresses, and they go back, and they, they, they settle down again. And then, and then another wave, and then they regress. And then when the PG is out, when the, sorry, when the prostate, when the progesterone is out of the way, that last one grows, 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 gets big, and then um, estradiol comes in, causes display of estrus, and then that causes about 24 hours later the release of GnRH. GnRH causes the release of, of and yep, yeah. Rad. You guys are awesome. So luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone makes that big follicle grow. The egg goes, whing, pops. It goes down the little slippery side, the fallopian tube. Hits the endometrium, starts cruising around going, it's like it's the nightclub. Push, 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 push. Waiting for the little motorboats to arrive. And first in best dressed on those fellas. So one of those gets there, freaking happy days, music. They talk about poetry and things like that. And a life together. and. If they're lucky that they become one cell, they become one, because they were halves each, right? And that becomes two, and two becomes four, and four becomes eight, and eight becomes 16. 16 becomes 32. 32 becomes 64 becomes 128 becomes 256. We love math. We love math. We love math. 512, 1024, 2048. 1096. All right, enough is enough. Radio, shut my pie hole. Radio. So that, so that's pretty rad, right? And then, and as it's floating around, it, oh shit, uh, somewhere, it, you know, when we flush them for embryo transfer, we go into day seven while they're still floating around, and we flush them out, collect them in a little sieve, and then we can either transfer them fresh or freeze them and transfer them later. Pretty rad, pretty cool. Um, I think by then they're at 64 cells, um, something like that. Um, maybe I've got that wrong. Anyway. Something like that. Radio. So, so that's happening, happening, happening. It implants on the wall of endometrium, sends a signal, and mom doesn't make it go away. Radio. So, two shots of prostaglandin, we've got the synchronization, but we still got to come out for two or five days. Now, we are driving to a property that is 150 Ks from home to AI 100 caps. 
I can't afford to go out there on day two, twice a day, day three, twice a day, day four, twice a day, day five, twice a day, and then not have them all submit. You got a poor submission rate with two shots of Prosty as well. So we're using fixed time AI. Everything gets AI. And even those that aren't on heat, we give them something to tickle them up, which is gin or H. We give them the needle of gin or H to, to the slope. They do have a, uh, a follicle there. It'll make it mature. Really sick. Okay, so day zero. What are we going to do with these cows? What happened? Oh, about, uh, happened about 10 days prior to today. We brought them in and stuck into them. Uh, yep, we gave them semester dial and also a, a in there. Their vagina. Um, in, yep, an intravaginal progesterone releasing device. So, again, back in the dream time, we realized that we needed to give them progesterone and we didn't have a way to give them because the key with the progesterone is you got to give it to them and then take it away. So, we couldn't give just an injection because you can't get rid of it. But then some bright spark said, Well, I know what we can do. We'll make a progesterone releasing implant and we'll put it in their ear. So, you'd stick this into their ear <coughs> and then we give them a shot of estradiol. And then when you need to remove the progesterone, they would cut the tag out of the ear. They cut the implant out of the ear. That's great for the first year, and maybe the second year, the other year. <laughs> maybe even the third year, because the scar tissue settled down. But eventually, you know, they get pretty, get pretty tired of their ears. And no one likes cutting things out of little ears and stuff. So some other bright spark came up with PRITS, which are progesterone-releasing intravaginal devices. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah, yeah. Just pretty rad. That's cool. Um, so we, as you said, gee bang it, <laughs> we will, <laughs> we, <sorry. laughs> George, we will insert an intravaginal progesterone releasing device. So everything's got progesterone, and we'll give them a shot of estradiol. Now, when there's no progesterone in the way, estradiol will cause the display of estrus, cause the release of LH and FSH, and ovulation. But when there's progesterone in the way, the shot of estradiol will reset the follicular wave. So we're setting everything back to day zero. And so we're gonna then mimic that whole seven day cycle. And we want, the, we want the follicle to be as big and as mature as we can. And then, so we did that on say Monday. And then on Tuesday, we'll come in and we'll pull the devices out. We'll give them a shot of prostaglandin and that's to get rid of any seals that are there. Flick, 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 flick. Um, and we're gonna pull the progesterone release device out. So now there's no progesterone. And we're going to give them a shot of equine chorionic gonadotropin or otherwise known as pregnant mare serum gonadotropin. And what that is, is like follicular fertilizer. So it's like, like a little bit of seasoning on the uh, follicle. It's gonna make it grow a little bit bigger in case it's quite small. Cause it's kind of like a little bit timid. Like, I don't wanna come out, I don't wanna come out. A little bit of PMS, you are ah, I'm a madman. I'm gonna go and release my oocytes onto the world. Wahoo. And so uh, we do that. And and then the next morning, and this is, an, this is an option, but this is what I like to do. And the next morning, 24 hours later, we'll give them another shot of Easter dot. And they probably would have mostly released their own estradiol, but we're going to say, right, everyone release estradiol now! So choreographed, wash, and then the next day at about 1 o'clock, so roughly 52, 53 hours after pull, so we pull them, 24 hours later we get estradiol, and then another um, uh, roughly 30 hours later, or 28 hours later, 29 hours later, that's when we show up with our semen, that lovely Rose, who's also a vet student, but is also an AI technician, um, she's going to uh, she's going to thaw the semen for us today, and we are going to stand behind the cow and carefully thread that that uh, gun through her cervix and deposit the semen into the uterus at the same time as roughly when they're showing heat. Um, and uh, hopefully, then the magic will happen from there. It's going to be pretty cool, and then I'll get some high value babies. So yeah, and that's fixed time AI. We're going to do it at a fixed time, and like I say, we'll AI all them, so we have 100% submission rate. So even if our conception rate's a little bit lower, we'll end up with a higher pregnancy rate because we got 100% submission. Is that pretty rad? Yeah. Sweet. Okay, so did that conjure up any questions while we were talking about it? For, like, yeah. because you said if they weren't in heat, you'd just give them an injection. We give them a shot of GNRH. Are you telling that, are you using heat detection pack? Yes. Ah, oh, great question. So on the on the time that we give, the last time we handled them before the day with AI, we put an Estrotech sticker on them, and they're kind of like a lottery ticket. It's got the same sort of you know the thing you scratch up with a coin. Um, so for those of you in the audience that don't know this, you know when you go to the pub and there's a couple ladies and there's a bunch of blokes, and blokes are sticks in the mud. We're standing around and the music's playing and it's great music and the blokes are standing around drinking beers, acting like they're cool. 
not realizing that they're actually quite toolish by doing what they're doing. And the ladies are like, how are we going to get these blokes to pay attention? Well, girls dance together, right? <laughs> well, cows do the same thing, man. So, yeah, when cows are in heat, they go into standing heat. So they'll allow other cows to ride them. And cows can sense that that cow that's not moving away from them wants someone to jump on her. So when they ride them, much like a bull would, with their chest, they rub all that gray stuff off off the, scouting off the lottery ticket. And it changes color because underneath the different colors, like scratch, 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 you win! You get red. Woohoo! Um, now, if we show up and some of them aren't rubbed, then they haven't, that suggests that they haven't produced their own estradiol. If they haven't produced their own estradiol, then that hasn't triggered the release of GNRH. If they haven't released GNRH, then that's going to have an LH and FSH surge. So we're going to go radio, here's your GNRH, and we'll give them the GNRH out of a bottle, give them the milk, and then that will make them ovulate, assuming that they've got a follicle there. Um, look, if we had time and if, and if it was really expensive semen, you might scan them and say, hmm, no follicle, she's in anestrus, no sense giving GnRH, because if there's no follicle there, the GnRH isn't going to trigger anything. Yeah. But what we're, what we're surmising, and we do get good results to the girls who don't show heat, is that there's a follicle sitting there and the estradiol hasn't, been, hasn't come out yet to trigger GnRH, to trigger luteinization and the, for that follicle to keep going. So, excellent question. Yeah, so Estratech stickers are the ones I use. There's a whole bunch of other varieties, but that's the type that we like to use. They're rad. They come in different colors. Um, you can cut them in half. Some guys cut them into thirds. Um, yeah, now they're really good tools. Estrotech stickers. Make sure you get one for your next Fixed on AI program. This, this, <laughs> this, this version of CowCast is brought to you by Estratech. <laughs> don't, don't forget to subscribe to Patreon. No, I'm just kidding. Hit that bell for notifications. <laughs> Just joking. I have never said that until now. And I'll never say it again. <laughs> All right, you got any questions back there, Rose? Tell us about the thawing procedure. So we're going to rock up. We're going to take the can down. I'm going to put on some clobber to keep the poo off me. Because, man, do they like to poo on me while I'm mating them. Yeah. And um, tell, tell us what you're going to do. So you might have to speak a bit loudly, though. Little straws about this big. Yep. Qu semen. Quarter mil straws. Yep. Yeah, and they're yeah, minus 200 and some odd degrees. It's yeah. cold in there. Yeah. For a reason. So you pull them out with some tweezers one at a time. Mm -hmm. And you stick it in a water bath at yep. about 35 degrees. Yes, ma'am. For a minimum of 40 seconds. Yep. And then once the, the time is done on the water bath, you get your tweezers again. You get a bit of paper towel. And you stick the straw in the paper towel. And you dab it. You don't want to rub it. get too hot yeah. yeah you'd have to really rub it pretty vigorously but look yeah. we are trying to make cows so it's conceivable um, but you want to get rid of all the water because semen doesn't like water either yeah, yeah. and then um, we have it doesn't like light too like uv so we try to stay out of the sun yeah, yeah. um and then we get these metal guts rods and you stick the top in or the top end in and then you yep. cut off the top yeah the wadding end which is kind of like the plunger on a syringe what's yeah. it in yep and then And what I'm doing is I, I reach my hand into the into the rectum, um, and as soon as I go in, I just make a bit of a fist and lift my wrist up, kind of flex it, and that kind of opens the vulva. And then I take a paper towel and wipe the vulva and jam the paper towel on the bottom, kind of sear, which just opens that up a bit, just to make it easy for me to get the gun in without hitting the sides. Um, I try to steer clear of the urethra, so the urethra is on the bottom of the vagina. If you go in there and put the seam in there, it just gets pissed. Yeah. Out. <laughs> so, um, uh, past the gun, um, I've then once I've got the gun in there, where it's full depth in the vagina, the vagina's quite deep, it's like almost eight, nine, ten, eleven inches deep. It's pretty, twelve inches deep, yeah, it's pretty, pretty deep. Uh, once I'm in, then I'll clean out the rectum if I need to. Like, if I got a lot of poo in there and I need to grab that cervix, I need to because I'm going to do is going to manipulate the cervix and carefully drag it over the gun because you can't push the gun through the cervix, you got to pull the cervix over the gun. So you got the vagina, then you got a cervix, which is about the size of a hot dog bun, depending on the size of the animal. And it's got a very narrow track through the middle of it, which opens up a little bit when they're on heat. And I gotta thread that gun through it. And then once I'm through it into the body of the uterus, that's where I'll deposit the semen. And then I'll just withdraw it. And uh, yeah, yeah, hope for the best. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I like doing it. It's kind of cool the next year when you go back and people go, hey, there's your calves. They go, those are my calves, those are my babies. 
ten thousand of those little buggers a year, give or take. Wow. I AI 10,000s probably get about 6,000 of them pregnant. <coughs> Which is pretty cool. It's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I'm a daddy. Who's your daddy? I'm your daddy. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. And then these are, it's a stud, so these bulls will go on to sell. <coughs> One of those sires that we're using today was, he was a $160,000 paratrooper. Yeah. And this straw is currently, I think, are selling for a little over 100 bucks a straw. Which is pretty rad. So don't drop them. Get that stuff them up. That's it, I'll make sure I put them in the right place. And his sons at the last uh, Mill of Muricel averaged 47 grand. Wow. And one of his sons sold for 280 grand. And another one sold for 240 grand. Yikes. So we gotta make sure we do a good job. But uh, the key to veterinary medicine, same with dealing with horses, is people go, this is a million dollar horse. Treat that horse just like a dollar horse. Yep. Always do your best. Don't let the price tag get to your head. Hi, hi. Well, that's us for another cow cast or poo cast or what do, I think we call it the we call them a poo cast. That's it. This is our second poo cast. Thank you for tuning in. We've got a couple lovely future vets here. They're the future. I'm in the past. I'm old and buggered. This is the future right here. This is the future. It's going to be awesome. All right. Love your guts. Catch you next time. See you, bye.